Hi, this is Uma Mahesh from CRM Once. In this video, I'm going to explain how we can start implementing the logic in the custom PCF control. So let me share my uh, VS4 code solution. So in our previous video, so I have explained that how we can define the ma manifesto file. So basically this code path, so in the under resources tag in the manifesto file, the code path, the file name. So which file is a, like a starting for the index.ts slide. So this is a file where we will do the program for the custom PCF control. So now we had to go to the in your project, you can see that index.ts. So this file will be created when you create the PCF project. So when you open this file, so here you can see, so let me scroll up. So here, you can see in the index dot ts, ts means it's a extension of the TypeScript file. So here the TypeScript files, uh, the program will start with the import. So basically in our uh, C sharp or in the C++, it's like a include, uh, it's kind of a header. So we can we can Im import that uh, some, some thought some we can easily include that the other classes in our thing right so here we have a export method so everything will start with the export uh, class so the export is like a keyword so in this uh, in this class we have to we have to tell that like a which can inputs and outputs and we inside that we will have like a constructor and inside that we have a main so one of the main method is like a initiate method so initiate is like a it's kind of a thing where control will start loading it right so in this one in the initiate method so it will expect a couple of parameters so like a context right so context will expect that like a component inputs. So whatever the inputs you are getting here. So here, whatever the from standard inputs, whatever you are getting that you will pass into the context, right? And you have it. And, and, and like a initial, initial init method, it's kind of a initializing the comp component and we will have like a particular action or remote the remote server calls we will do in the in init method so this init method will have the properties uh, like like a couple of properties so context context will contain the input properties also contains the parameters on interface functions on the component metadata and we have a state so you can see this state. So state is, is having like a uh, state is having this parameter where we'll uh, save this and it will set the state of the control state. So which is like a previous earlier session, whatever we have in that state, you will, you will able to get it he here in this state. And And you have a notification output, notify output change. So this is JavaScript, I mean, this is a type is a function. So where you will, uh, where, where like when the control new, uh, when the control is new output is available uh, to display that. So this notification change method, we will call it. And we have a container. So container will we, we have it here one more parameter here. So this container is like a basically HTML dev. So type is like a HTML dev element. 
So this parameter will use the div element to render the content to render the content. So, so basically how we can start implementing this in in init method, what type of code we will write it, we will see in the next couple of videos, right? So basically this init initialized method, it's kind of a our CRM form on load. It's similar to the form on load. So we have an, another method is update view. Update view we have a parameters like a context. Context in the context you will get like a, all the inputs and the the properties, and we will get the metadata those details to here. So this update view when it will trigger. So whenever the, when the new value is changed. So in the property, some some new value is changed in the back property back. So that time it will change. So it can be a, like a field values or global values or data sets or component metadata and so on. It contains the parameters that includes what are the values is changed. So that update view method will trigger. So basically on the control, if anything is got changed, so then this update view method will trigger. So in CRM, if you ask me like, it's like a field on change, on change event, it's similar to the field on change event. So all like a, whenever you, you select some value on the, on the field in the background, you want to write some code for the PCF control. So we will, we will start implementing these lines of code here in the update view. And and we have another method get output outputs. So get outputs here. We have to return that in the properties, right? In the field prop in, in the piece of control, what the element, what the output you want to display. We have to set it here in the in the return. So in this method, we have to set it. And we have another method destroy. So if you want to this method, I mean, this method will trigger. And if you want to clean up the controls and you want to clean up the uh, DOM objects or you want to clean up the some memory, we want to clean up the memory that's still, uh, still used by the component. So th for those scenarios, we will, we will call this destroy method. So here, the main summary for this. So in the TypeScript, so we have a main methods is like init and update view and out get outputs and we have a destroy. So init method, we will, we will call like a, whatever the logic we want to implement. So like it's similar to the, on the control on load, you want to do some logic and you want to write some server calls or you want to do some something in the onload of the control. So we will do that code in the init method. And if you if you want to check, like whenever some value is changed in the property va field values or in the property values or in the metadata. So that time you want to trigger some logic, some code in, in the uh, something you want to check, you want to do it, then we have to use the update view that method we have to write it and the get output uh, output method so output output method will like always you will map the what the pcf control result right so what you want exactly you want to return that from the p from the back end to the ui ui elements so that we will map it here and the destroy so whatever the controls or DOM elements you want to clean up, then we will use the destroy method. Thank you so much for watching this video.